Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about the Super Micro Micro Cloud AS 3015 MRH8 TNR. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a bit more about the Super Micro Micro Cloud. This is one I was really excited to talk about as a whole. Uh, before we get in, do us a favor. If you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, so uh, what makes this server so great and one of the things I was so excited about as a whole is that, first off, it's a 3U 8-node Ryzen. It's the first of its kind. Normally, you have to have a 1U for a Ryzen. Um, this is just a very compact, dense uh, consolidation for eight servers, and on top of that we're going from the AM4 socket which was really ASRock's world now to the AM5 socket which is going to be in my opinion Super Micro's world and there's going to be other people that are going to get in the AM5 game but uh, the ASRock boards as a whole they just they weren't built as good quality as compared to Super Micro, which is why I'm super excited and super pumped about the AM5s in the three U8 nodes. So let's go ahead and hop in and talk a little bit about the specs per node. So let's start with the CPU since that's the most important thing about the server. Of course, it's an AMD Ryzen, which is just awesome in itself. AMD Ryzen is just an incredibly powerful proc. Most of the time when people hear AMD Ryzen, they're thinking it's going to be a consumer processor. They might have put this in a uh, workstation they built at home for gaming. And yes, there are AMD Ryzens that are consumers, but the AMD Ryzens that are in here are actually server grade processors that have you know three year warranty, uh, depending on the warranty you get, but have three year warranty from Super micro so you can trust that they're going to be a good quality processor overall it's going to be zen 4 architecture and again it's going to be an am5 socket you use the 7000 series which is going to be uh, the ryzen 9 and the best that you can put in there is the ryzen 9 uh, 7950x that's going to be uh, 16 cores with 32 threads that's going to be uh, 4.5 gigahertz and you can boost it up to 5.7 and that's going to be your top of the line processor and the fact that uh, Super Micro has designed this I'm very excited about it as a whole because that's going to help with some of the cooling issues or I should say the heating issues or the heating problem that the AM4s had on the ASRocks so this is going to be a great design overall. So let's hop into the memory. So there are four DIMM slots inside. It takes DDR5 memory, which is pretty awesome because it's going to be the first Ryzen that takes DDR5 memory. It takes ECC unbuffered and non-ECC unbuffered memory. That's going to be a number of different sizes that you can take. You can put in a 8 gig, a 16 gig, or up to a 32 gig. So you can max out technically at 128 gigabytes. There's a number of different speeds that you can use. You can go as low as 4,000, 4,400, 4,800, or all the way up to 5200 which is definitely what I recommend but again all of them will work and are great as a whole and you do have to note that your speeds could clock down depending on how many modules are putting in there as a whole so just a quick note for that so all right now that we know a little bit more about the CPUs and the RAM let's talk about the drives so let's hop into the drives. So there are 16 hot swap drives that you can see in the front, and there are eight nodes in the back as we discussed. So that means a little quick math, two drive slots per node, which is two U.2s. So technically you can put a hard drive inside there, um, a SATA or a SAS, uh, but be able to put the SATA or SAS and you need to make sure you have a Broadcom chip. If you have Intel, you can only use NVMe. And really these are specifically designed for NVMe. So that's kind of what you want to put in there. So I, I would go with the NVMe and just make sure you, that your 3.5 inch tray is set up to install a 2.5 inch drive because NVMe drives will be uh, 2.5 inch. So essentially there are two U.2 slots which I recommend for NVMe SSDs, and then you have one M.2 slot, which is for NVMe, which is great for a boot drive, okay? So now we know a little bit more about the drives. Let's hop into the front, the back. Let's get going. All right, so I wanted to change the angle for you just to get a better shot so you can see the, uh, the eight different nodes here. So let's hop into connectivity and your network cards and your expansion cards as a whole. So uh, as far as uh, your expansion slots, you have one PCIe slot. That's all that you're going to get. It's a low-profile slot, and a lot of people are going to want to use that for GPUs, which we'll talk right after connectivity. And if you want to use that for a GPU, uh, the best thing that you can do for uh, your network connectivity is to use the micro 
LP slot. In the micro LP slot, you can put in a one gigabit, you can put in 10 gigabit copper, you can put in 10 gigabit op optical, you can put in 10 gigabit fiber. So you have a number of different choices uh, for that as a whole. So let's hop into the GPUs. So uh, for the GPUs, uh, what has been spec'd in and what we know for certain will work is going to be uh, NVIDIA A2, M4, L4, and T4. All these are going to be wonderful options for GPUs, which are great for gaming especially, right? Um, next up, let's talk about the BMC. The BMC is what you're going to need for remote management. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, Supermicro running the BMC as opposed to ASRock. I have no disrespect for ASRock. We have built a ton of ASRock machines, but something just was never right about the BMCs for those AM4s, and so I'm a big fan of the fact that uh, Supermicro is going to be a running point for the software on these, and I just think it's going to be uh, just better quality and better user experience experience overall. All right, so I wanted to just point out a few things on the back of the notes here. So here's your KVM port. You're going to have uh, your um, USB Type-C right here. This is going to be the, uh, the micro LP that we were talking about. And of course, this is going to be your PCIe expansion slot for your low profile if you want to put in a GPU or something else there. Uh, built into the chassis, there are two uh, 10 gigabit uh, RJ45 LAN ports up here, uh, but again, uh, the micro LPs are the way to go. So, um, and then oh, the the power button. I'm not sure if I mentioned that, but there's your power button kind of hidden right here, um, and that's kind of what's going on with the back ports as a whole. Um, and they pop just in and out real easy, just like anything else you've been in. So you just push this down, and this will just slide right out. And we'll actually do a close up for you right now of one of the blades. All right, so just want to do a quick shot of the blade itself. So right here you have your M.2 that we discussed. You have your micro LP so that you can uh, put in 10 gigabit connectivity. This is where your Ryzen is going to go, and you have four dim slots under these little mini air baffles here to just help with the airflow. Um, and as a whole, this is, um, like I said, just a great machine. I'm very excited about the design, being able to actually put Ryzen's into a blade. I think it's just going to be uh, huge uh, for the hosting industry specifically because you'll be able to uh, you know, just save so much money with co-location and being able to uh, put so much into a small space. And one of the things I actually wanted to mention um, that because if you put in a 16 core proc, you can actually put 15 virtual machines per processor, which means with eight nodes, you can actually do 100 and put 120 virtual machines on a 3U box, which with the Ryzen's performance is actually pretty amazing when you stop and kind of all break it all down. So that's something I definitely wanted to highlight. All right, so we'll go ahead and wrap this up with a few other uh, quick points. Uh, there are two power supplies inside. They're going to be 2,200 watt. They're going to be uh, 80 plus titanium level. So they're going to be, uh, of course, server grade power supplies. Uh, there's going to be four heavy duty fans that are inside that are going to help with uh, just keeping this cool and not overheating, which obviously has been a problem with Ryzen's in the past. They run very, very hot, so having a good cooling solution is very, very important. Um, the, the 3U chassis itself is going to be uh, 5.21 inches tall, and it's going to be 17.26 inches wide, and the depth is going to be 23.2 inches, and we'll put up the millimeters as well, um, so that's going to be the size of the the box. And some other important notes that this is going to be a PCIe Gen 5.0, which is going to be the first of its kind for Ryzen's, which again just makes this uh, just such an amazing, powerful box. And one of the cool things about this is that AMD has come out and said that uh, the AM5 socket is going to be around until 2028. So that's six years. So technically, you can buy this box and then later down the line change out the CPUs and still use everything else, which is, I'm always a big fan of that. Uh, that's just great for upgrades in the future without having to buy all the rest of the hardware and just pop in new procs to upgrade down the line. And again, that means this box will be relevant until 2028 and really beyond that too, because that's the last time you'll be able to upgrade. So you'll still be able to use it till you know, 2030, 2032. So if you're buying that right now, you could potentially use this box for a decade, which is 
pretty awesome when you think about that from a hardware standpoint and how much money you're having to spend up front, uh, that being able to use it for 10 years, the return on investment can be huge for you long term. So, all right, now that we know so much about this system, if you're looking to get any uh, of these yourself, please give us an opportunity. Uh, we can definitely get you a better price in the Supermicro e-store. We can supply bulk. We can ship internationally. We stock these. Um, and this is, again, something that we would love the opportunity to earn your business. So please email us at sales at cloudninja.com. That's sales at cloudninja.com. And if you're not familiar with our company, yes, we are authorized with Supermicro and we do sell new Supermicro, but we also sell used Supermicro and we sell new and used Dell, HPE, IBM, Cisco. We sell upgrades for the components inside. We sell complete uh, system integration. We sell warranty. We try to be the entire life cycle. And again, we would just love the opportunity to earn your data center, your home labs of business. Thanks again for stopping by, guys. Take care. Thank you.